Thank y'all. So we have another special guest in the house. I want y'all to give a warm welcome. Let me see if I can guess who I'm bringing out. Yeah. LeBron No. No, no, no. No. Hey, baby. 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 Hurricane Chris, come on out here. Hey, baby. Come on out here, Hurricane Chris. Hey, baby. Y'all know who that is? Yeah. Who is that? I can't hear y'all. Who is y'all that? Y'all know the dance, right? The A Baby dance. That's Hurricane Cross. Let's give it up. All right. A Baby. A Baby. Thank you. A Baby. A Baby. Hey, baby. <laughs> Let me see who know the dance. Who know the dance? We in line. Who know the dance? A Baby. It's viral right hey, baby. now. <laughs> What's good? I got on these heavy hey. shoes, so I don't want to. I don't want to risk it. What's poppin', what's poppin'? Man, thank you so much for coming. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, Um, yeah. First off, I wanna tell you, again, I'm sorry for being late, you know. It's all good. I'm late, you know, I want to apologize personally for that. Thank you, I appreciate that, thank you, thank you. So your career has been very interesting, and we see a resurgence with TikTok bringing back a lot of older songs. So how did it make you feel when A Baby went viral again, like a month and a half ago, and Kevin Hart and Sierra and everybody was doing the dance? Oh man, that was that was that was just like crazy. I just woke up one morning and the song was viral again. You know, I did the song in 2007. I was 17 mm-hmm. years old. Yep. To see it come back around right now and just go crazy, it's over a hundred million views on TikTok. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just a blessing from above. You know? Yeah. I mean, the, the power of social media is, especially in this day and age, it's a little bit easier to break in and create your own way, whereas before you had to go through those industry channels. And now, the people on social media, we dictate what's hot. So if we want to bring back an old song and make it viral, we can get it back on iTunes, the Billboard, and everything else. So you're seeing that happening, especially with this generation, because um, I think my baby, he's 16 now, so he's probably one when the song came out. But now he knows you because of that TikTok song. Second time around. Exactly, exactly. So you see how things work? So I just thought that that was really amazing. Now yesterday, as we were pulling up some information, you were thrown into the shade room. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So can we talk about that real quick? So yeah. there's an artist called Cookie Kawaii. And so they had posted on the shade room yesterday. I never heard of her. You ain't never heard of her? Yeah, she's in her What feelings. song she sang? She, she says that you took her song. What song? What? She has some baby song. I never heard of her either until the shade room posted her. I'm like, I thought that was his song, but maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I bumped my head and I don't know what's going on. I might yeah. be in a whole nother universe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I might be crazy and just bump my head or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, she wrote this whole dissertation about how you took her flow. You didn't give her credit. And it was just like, at this point, people can just make up anything. Like we were talking about earlier. And as long as it's salacious, it will make it to places like the shade room. But you were on the shade room yesterday. Yeah, um, so basically, the TikTok went viral. And um, I was just watching it. And eventually I said, I wonder who behind it. So I started reaching out to see who was behind it. Like, you know, let's collaborate and do something. And I wasn't getting a response. So... 
finally when I just, I had so many different people from so many different angles reaching out, I finally found out who was responsible for the TikTok. I was like, yo, you know, it's hot. I'm finna, I'm finna actually redo the record for real. You wanna come out and hop in a video? Mm. And then they told me, now nah, you need to come shoot it in Jersey. This is a southern song. Why are we going to the east coast? I'm from Cedar Grove, Shreveport, Louisiana. You better tell them. Look, my city created this. Right. This is something that we created. That's like somebody telling Atlanta they owe them for snap music, mm. for trap music. Mm. You sound crazy. It's like, right. you know. Right. So basically, I feel like they stole my bike out of my front yard, mm. spray painted it, and I just sat at home for a couple of days, like, you know. And then my mama said, you don't see that's your bike right there? Go get your bike. You better walk down the street, get on that bike, and ride it back down here. Mm -hmm. So I went and got on my bike, you heard me? Right. And right now, we're doing over 100,000 views a day. Yeah. We're I know that's dunk. right. I know that's right. Yep. And you know, if you put some rims on my bike or whatever you did to it, I appreciate you. Right. Yeah. It's right. like, you know. Because it's I still your you. bike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. If you washed it, thank you. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad that you broke that down because people were just kind of confused yesterday. Like, well, who is this and why are they so upset? And I think that's the thing. Like, we have to learn to pay homage. You know, sometimes things go viral and it's a collaborative effort. You know what I'm saying? So it's like about paying homage and, and working together. But again, egos come into play. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one thing when you pay homage. Um, it's like if I create something and call it your show, I come up with, with, with something and, and just flip your whole show. Mm -hmm. And then I tell you, in order for you to, 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 to be affiliated with it, you got to go through me. Right. When I created it on the foundation that you created. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm standing on top of your foundation. I'm in your house that you bought telling you I put milk in the refrigerator. Right. <laughs> Man, get your happening. milk, take your milk and get out of here, man. Get your <laughs> milk, man. <laughs> so how do you feel about hip-hop? Because when you were out back then, you know, with your music and things like that, hip-hop has changed a lot. And we've had different discussions over the years. You know, we had the SoundCloud rappers who came out, you know, and they were kind of labeled mumble rappers. Lyrics weren't really as important as beats and things like that. So how do you feel like about the current state of hip hop? Like, do you feel like lyricism still matters? I mean, yeah, I love it. I love everything that's happening. All the new artists that's jamming is, number one, I love to see young guys make money without having to go to the streets. Mm -hmm. So if somebody making some money without having to run and break in your house and steal something from you or do something bad to somebody, I'm a big up that from the beginning, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a big up that. They ain't did nothing bad to nobody. Right. I ain't hating on nobody music. Like, I don't want music to sound like it sounded way back in the gap. Music wasn't that hard back in the gap. It's hard now. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's, everything got to evolve. Right. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about growing up in Louisiana, like just your childhood and, you know, what made you get into music? Um, I got in a freestyle competition when I was like 12 years old, mm -hmm. and I won it at a high school. I wasn't even supposed to be on campus. It was the first <laughs> rap I ever wrote. I just stuck with it ever since then. Mm -hmm. Everybody used to come stand in front of my yard after the high schoolers got out of school and watch me rap. Mm -hmm. It's just something I never stopped doing. You know, not for the money. You know, it's just something I really love to do. It was a passion. Yeah. So how did it feel as a 17-year-old kid? You know, you're in high school, you're a teenager, and this song just blows up. Like, what does that do to, like, your ego, for one? Because, you know, when you're young, we kind of have an ego, so I know you was feeling yourself. But just, like, you know, the attention and seeing yourself on television, did you ever imagine that it would be as big as it was? 
to be honest, I've been, I have been rapping since I was like 11, 12. I got the deal at 17, so I felt like it had been a hard struggle. Mm. So it was like finally getting in a house when you've been getting turned down and denied for rent applications or, 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 or buying a house. It's, by the time you get in it, it's hard for you to even acknowledge how far you came because of how hard you struggled to get there. People could come to your house and tell you it's so nice and how much they, you might think they tripping, but nah, they really can see it from another perspective. You just so deep in it that you don't understand your progress. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm feeling that, I'm feeling that. So now let me also ask you, um, and that's if you feel comfortable talking about it. Um, the situation in 2020, is that over with? You know, like, is that, do you feel comfortable speaking on that? I start trial next month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I start trial next month. And I know you were even saying, like, in previous interviews, you've never been in trouble before. I ain't like, never had a jaywalking ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I ain't got no convictions, period, of nothing whatsoever mm -hmm. on my record. Right. Yeah. And so many times the things that will go viral are things like that, but they never promote the rappers who are out here doing the right thing. Like you said, you've never been in trouble before, never been to jail, and this was a situation that happened. So, you know, I hope, my hope for you is that everything, you know, goes good. And I'm just, you know, really grateful to see you coming back because you're so humble. Thank you. So I'm just grateful to see like a resurgence in this. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> and introducing you, thank a new generation, you know, to your music. I appreciate it. Appreciate yeah, it. Definitely. So what can we look forward to in the future as far as like your music, when it's dropping, things like that? Are you working on some new stuff? Are you taking advantage of this resurgence? I mean, I love to do music, so I'm just going to keep dropping music. Um, mm -hmm. It's something I'm always do. Um, stream to my bass single, the video out right now. Make sure you look that up and check that out. And I'm going to be dropping music like once a week regardless. You know, go to my Spotify, go to my YouTube, my Instagram, at Hurricane Chris Fisher. Just keep up with me. You know, ain't no telling what I'm going to be doing. I might be sitting on the couch watching TV. I might not be doing nothing, you hear me? <laughs> but one thing I ain't going to be doing is lying. I'm going to be telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So we're gonna go ahead and take some questions from the audience. So, if you, oh, you like? Oh. oh, okay. Well, go ahead, baby. <laughs> my question is: If you had, I'm sure you have been in Louisiana, um, the bandwagoners, the ones that's nowhere around when you really need that support and that push, and then once you, and then once you have that support and that push, that push, you. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean that too, but once you have, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. That, yeah, it's all good. Um, once you have that, and and people are seeing things happening for you in a different way. Just like I said, I was going to Atlanta. They don't know what I'm doing, but now everybody's at my throat now, mm -hmm. since they see I'm trying to do things, and you know stuff is moving. How do you deal with bandwagoners? Cause you want to be there for your people. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more time. So. So basically the question is bandwagoners. How do you deal with bandwagoners? The person, the people who are not there for you when you really need their support, but when they see things are happening for you, now they all of a sudden want to be there. I mean, family, friends, whoever. How do you deal with those bandwagoners? Do you still look out for them when you make it? Or do you say, hey, cook your pancakes, I'm up here? So what I do is, say for instance, I got a lot of people that, that did what you just said. Um, if, as long as you didn't go against me, I ain't got no ill will for you. And I actually want you to get close enough to see what you missed out on. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm going to still answer the phone because I know what you're thinking. Soon as I don't answer the phone, I give you that satisfaction of saying, oh, he changed. He ain't. Mm -hmm. Now, I might not tell you where I stayed. I'll let you come to my house. <laughs> but I'm going to answer the phone. I'm going to listen to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I might start talking to somebody else while you're talking. <laughs> you hear me? But I, I'm going to answer the phone and see what you got going on. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and sometimes these same people come get in situations where they really need you. And then it's time to forget about how they didn't have your back. It's time to be the person that you are. Mm. I'm gonna be who I am. If I'm the type of person that help a person in need, it ain't because they help me or because I feel like they will help me. I'm just basically helping wherever I can extend a hand at, you hear me? My grandma let everybody come in her house and eat. She didn't know who you was. You could have been a robber, a killer. You know, she gave you that until you gave her a reason not to give you that. So you ain't gotta you ain't gotta really come back through and and, and, and take a dump on your haters, you know, because it's gonna hurt them enough knowing that they choose to go the way they choose to go and not be a part of your greatness. So it ain't nothing you gotta tell them. All you gotta do is keep going. And 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 maybe, maybe some of them will come around. Everybody don't come around in the beginning. So you can't be mad at them. Maybe it was for you to go make that move and make them a believer. Mm. Mm. Talk about it. If you ain't no preacher. All right. So I want to elaborate. One thing that we also need to realize, this is what I'm learning too. Sometimes the closest people to you, and I'm talking about friends, even associates, they're not going to be the ones that necessarily support you. Amen. You're going to get more support from strangers. Yep. And people that you don't personally know yes. than some of your friends. Yep. So you need to be aware of that. Okay? Most of the people here, I don't personally know y'all, but y'all are here. But I have friends. I love y'all too. I have friends right now in the Twin Cities I don't grow up with. I didn't get a congratulations. I didn't get a good luck. I didn't get how can I help. But it's okay. I know I haven't changed. I know who I am. It's okay. This proved to me who my real friends are and the people who have my back. So what you do is you cherish the ones who have your back. You cherish the ones who are giving of themselves to you. And those are the ones you focus on. Okay? That's what it's about. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Because most of the people who support you are going to be people you don't know. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we have another question in the audience. Okay. Hi, T. I'm Jaleesa. Um, well, I'm, I'm Yellow Pickle. I've sent the super check. <laughs> sent the super check a couple times. Hi, Chris. Um, I actually had a question for you. Um, my homeboy who I grew up with, I've known him since the first grade. He actually is a rapper, um, really lyrical, really good, and I'm very picky about who I listen to. Um, but he was scared to go um, the record label route um, just for them to like turn away you know, his music. He raps more about positive stuff. Um, is there any way or like any other route that he could go? I know he puts his stuff on YouTube, which is another idea I gave him, but um, I, don't, I don't know. How, how would like he be able to get his stuff maybe? out? Um, if I was him, I would just focus on putting out my music where it was accepted. Um, and it could be your YouTube, your Spotify. You can connect with your fans directly. He, he could have been in here where you at right now and stood up and told everybody about his music. So I mean, it's, it's so many ways to, to do it. It's really no excuse. Like, I started rapping as like, a super young dude and ever since elementary or middle school they always knew I could rap like it was something I made sure everybody knew I could do so I guess it's, it's, it's all based on how bad you want it that'll make you take every opportunity and every available platform and exercise it to the best of your abilities and then one thing I'll say about that for your friend People also need to understand when you get into the music industry, what are your reasons for going into the industry? Are you there just to make money? Is it just about fame? Is it just about attention? Because there's a lot of underground artists that are eating very well. 
Okay, it's about building a fan base. As long as you have a core fan base, you're straight. You may not never make it onto the billboards, you may not be invited to the Grammy Awards, but that's okay. You're still able to tour and do what you love if music is your passion. So it should be about building your fan base and building people who support you regardless. Now, if you're just in it for the fame, you're not gonna last too long, because most people, they might have a good three, four year run, and then it's on to the next. So that's one thing you should ask your friend, why is he really in it? Because if you're passionate, you're gonna put your music out there no matter what, on whatever platform available because you want your voice heard. Straight up. Exactly. We on the same page. What she said. <laughs> that part. Any other questions? Okay, we have about three more questions and we'll be done with this segment, okay? okay. So, um, let's say your name. Uh, my, my name is kal -El. Um, I want to ask you a couple questions. Well, one question. Like, when, you, when your song blew up, like, how did, like, your friends and, like, your family react? Like, was they quick to ask you for money or was, like, they supportive for you? Nah, nah, nobody. I got, like, a couple cousins that... I think they always ask for money before the deal. <laughs> but, okay. okay, we got two more questions. I never, I never been the dude that you would just, it's all on your, who, what's your personality? If you seem like a dude I can ask for a thousand dollars, I'm probably gonna ask you. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's all on how you present yourself. I never walk around with my wallet out. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the next question. Okay. Hey T, hey Hurricane Chris. Hey. Um, I just wanted to know, are you gonna have another, for the person who remixed your song, are you ever gonna have another conversation? And what do you have to say to people who are remixing these songs and not paying homage? Um, most DJs pay homage. Most DJs understand what they're doing. I never really seen a DJ use the artist's music and not shout them out. Um, actually, A Bay Bay came about from me shouting out a DJ. So, and it's always been about homage in the, in the industry, paying respects. Just like me grabbing a Michael Jackson song, sampling it, and calling it the Hurricane Swain. It's just, that's crazy, it's, it's crazy. Like, and saying nothing about Michael Jackson in the midst of it. Never shouting out Michael Jackson, just, but, but it's clearly him on the beat saying beat it with his voice. <laughs> and I'ma keep saying, yeah, this the new hurricane. And they're gonna say, how you created it? And I'ma say, yeah, one day I just, I was in the studio and I was just, you know, and, and I'm just gonna keep forgetting that this is Michael Jackson and say nothing about him. So when I receive negative energy, I choose not to indulge um, I choose not to try to figure out what's the root of the negative energy because to find a root of negative energy, you got to go too deep into it. Mm -hmm. So anything that I feel that make me feel like it ain't of, you know, what God would want me to do or be a part of, I just stay away from it. And that's responding. Um, you can't get mad. Your feelings are your feelings. Nobody else should be able to control how you feel. Our biggest problem is allowing other people to control how we feel. These, these are called your feelings. Your feelings. We, we hardwired ourselves and we start caring so much about every response that come out of people's mouth. So we're not able to be happy as we want to be. The only thing you should think about is if your skin is okay, if your heart is beating good, look at your hair follicles and count them. Think about the things that really matter. Just look at yourself in the mirror and just say, I got two eyes, a nose, like, mm -hmm. you know, just, just, just look at yourself for what you really are and not the stuff that we not in control of, you know. So anybody who use anybody music you know, I, I, would, I, would, I would tell you to pay homage because that's what I would do. Um, that's just bottom line. Definitely. Y'all weren't expecting this. Hurricane Chris then came through with some, you know, words of encouragement and everything else. So I really appreciate you just coming and sharing yourself with my audience. You know, this is what it's about. It's about showing other side of artists and celebrities because at the end of the day, we're multifaceted people. Yes. You know, we're, we're all, we have our struggles, our battles, our happiness, our sadnesses. And just thank you for being just open and honest and giving of yourself. 
You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. We have one to see. I have one more question. One more? Okay. Um, my question is, we, we've been talking a lot about my bae and a bae bae, but we can't forget about Halle Berry. Yeah. 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 Halle Berry. Bow, bow, we bow. need to know how that got started. How you start with Halle Berry? Where did that come from? So um, you, got, you got Duro and you got Superstar J. Um, and you got playing skills. They was in Dallas, and when I went to Dallas, they was like, it's a hit record. We got it. It's gone. We just, we, we got it going in Dallas. Um, playing skills introduced the record to me. Um, when I heard it, I was like, man, that's crazy. Let me get on this. I got on the record, and it just popped immediately, you know. No, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> The dance, they already had that on YouTube. Like before, before I even got on it, they was doing that on YouTube. They created that themselves. Like, okay. yeah, they created that we, on their we own. We really push the culture. People don't realize that we really push the culture. People of color really push the culture with the dance moves, the music, the beats. If it wasn't for a lot of us on these social media apps, they'd have nothing. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. It'd be dry, no seasoning. You're right. <laughs> So we do. Well, Chris, thank you so much once again for coming out. I'm I glad appreciate to be here. you. Anytime. Definitely. Give it up for her. Thank you, Chris, y'all. Thank you once again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.